Hey guys, what's up? It's Alec Torelli. Welcome back to an episode of the Hand of the Day where we're going to be looking at, I think, what is the key turning point hand in the heads up match between San Martino and Ensan, right here on the Hand of the Day. Hand of the Day. So before we jump into this, I did get a lot of comments about me reviewing the hand between Livingston with Queens, Gates with Tens, and San Martino with two eights. I do want to review this hand and give it the insight that it deserves, but it requires a lot of ICM. It requires me actually using the program and going into the back end and really like running the numbers in the lab. So I did this inside the membership at Conscious Poker. To get access, you can join for a free trial. Simply click the link below. For now though, let's jump into this hand. This is a very interesting turning point in the match between San Martino and Ensan. Blinds level 42, 1.5 million, 3 million with a 3 million big blind Annie. Ensan has queen 10 on the button. Very standard open here. You're gonna pretty much be opening, I would say some, some would argue 100% of hands, heads up with a big blind ante. Queen 10 obviously strong enough to open regardless, uh, even if there is no ante. The question is sizing. I would typically go a little bit bigger here than what Ensan decides to do, which is 6.5 million, basically a min raise. I'd probably be going seven, maybe even 7.5 million, uh, two and a half X with the big blind ante. You're really wanting to put more hands in a tough spot by raising bigger. Anyway, Ensan makes 6.5, not too big of a difference. Over to San Martino in the big blind, who I understand is gonna be defending pretty wide here. Facing a pretty much a min raise, let's say, with a big blind ante dead, uh, you're going to want to be defending pretty much always. Five deuce offsuit, not sure that necessarily qualifies. This is one of the hands I might let go. Um, you see, some would argue maybe for you know defending 100% here against a, basically a min raise. I think I would let go of these complete trash hands like five deuce, seven deuce, six deuce. Probably just fold. If they were suited, definitely call much more playability post flop. Five deuce off, I think I would just fold. As played, San Martino opts to call, and let's take a flop. With a pot of 16 million, the flop comes down 10, 5, 3 with a flush draw. San Martino flops pretty decent equity given how bad his hand is pre-flop. Flops uh, mid-pair, backdoor straight draw, backdoor flush draw, and San, top pair with a backdoor flush draw as well. San Martino checks, which is very standard on these like dry sort of 10, 5, 3 boards. You're going to be checking pretty much 100% of the time here, protecting your range, keeping it as wide as possible, allowing the pre-flop raiser to see bet. San Martino checks over to Ensan, very clear bet here. Typically in this spot, if you watched my last video where Ensan had two kings, we talked about bet sizing a lot in that video as well, and this is a very similar spot. The board texture is pretty much the same. Because Ensan is going to be betting here pretty much 100% of the time, he's going to want to always bet this flop because it favors his range. Uh, it's, a, it's a pretty dry board. He's going to want to see bet his air. His C betting range is going to be pretty wide. He's going to be betting often, which means he should be betting small. Something like a third of the pot here would be a good size, maybe 5 million. And San decides to go for 6.5, a little bit bigger, but that's fine. It's, it's you know, we're splitting hairs here, but uh, this is definitely a fine bet size, especially with his hand. Makes total sense. You could even opt for a bigger bet size with this hand uh, some of the time, and you could balance it out by betting a little bit less. That's another fine strategy, too. That The beautiful thing about poker is there is no one size fits all. You can sometimes bet small with this hand, sometimes bet big, maybe check with this hand some of the time. I think it, there's just too much value by betting, but th that's the beautiful thing about poker. You can really mix it up. Um, so, Ensign bets 6.5 over to San Martino, who has a very clear call. This is a great hand to call with. He has uh, mid-pair, backdoor straight draw, backdoor flush draw. Going to want to realize his equity. Doesn't really make sense to check raise with a hand like this. Sure, he gets some protection against a hand like Queen Jack. He can maybe just check raise and get those hands to fold. But I think the default play here is to call. And it really fits in with San Martino's style. He's been playing a low variance style, just kind of grinding it out, seeing a lot of flops, seeing a lot of turns, trying to get to show down and just make better decisions overall. And I think that fits in with his style. So I don't think he's going to take a high variance line here like a check raise with a middling hand like this one. San Martino calls. Let's take a turn. With a pot of 29 million, the turn comes down to queen of clubs. San Martino, again, has a very, very clear check. This is not a good card for his hand. It's also not a good card for his range. The queen is a better card for the button's range, simply because the button is more likely to bet the flop with a queen 
then the big blind is to check call with the queen. So this situation warrants a check from San Martino. Likewise, the situation warrants a bet from Ensan with top two pair. Very clear bet here. The only real question is how much. Could really go a few ways here. It depends on kind of what you think your opponent has. If you want to get value from a hand like a 5 or a 3, you're going to want to go a little bit smaller. Putting bigger pressure on a 10 or a draw, maybe go a little bit bigger. I think about half pot seems fine here, uh, pretty much regardless. And San bets 13.5 million, pretty standard here. It's a good bet size. Definitely don't want to go like a, a fourth of the pot here or something like that. I think that's just too small. You definitely want to be betting between a third and, and two-thirds of the pot here and charging some draws, putting pressure on a 10. Uh, even though you do block some 10s, um, you know, if your opponent does have that hand, he's going to call a second barrel regardless of the sizing, and you don't really want to let him draw for too cheap. 13.5 million, I love this size. Over to San Martino, who he really here has a decision. This is kind of like the key pivotal point in the hand. You can just kind of decide, you know what, this is a bad card for my range. I'm going to let this one go, uh, even though I accept that I'm going to be bluffed some of the time. This is just too tough of a situation. Sometimes in poker, you have to fold the best hand to win, just because otherwise you're going to be calling too often. This is a spot where I think I might let this one go. Even though I, I would accept that my opponent is going to be barreling often on this turn with any picked up equity, like ace-king, ace-jack, king-nine, jack-nine, jack-eight, uh, maybe like an ace four, ace deuce type of hand. There, are, you know, maybe a flush draw. There are a lot of hands I beat that my opponent is betting with, but at the same time, the situation is so tough, and there's so many bad things that could happen that I would probably just say. I would let this one go and wait for a better spot. I know that's not a great strategy heads up all the time because you're just going to get run over with that strategy. So I really can't, I can really get behind a call here. I could really understand why you would want to call. If you think your opponent is going to be barreling this turn very, very often because it's really impossible for us in the big blind to have a queen. And if we're just going to fold everything but top pair, we could just get bluffed too often. So sometimes you got to hang on. I understand the call. Um, and it's obviously easier when we could see the card. So I'm really trying not to be biased by saying, okay, he has top two, I would fold. Uh, I'm really trying to look beyond that and just think about what the long-term best strategy is here. I would definitely be calling this turn with a 10, um, but I would be condensing my range a little bit wider here on the turn. I would also call with some draws here. Uh, I think those hands play maybe a little bit better than a hand like 5-3. If I have a hand like Jack-9 at Diamonds or something like that, maybe even incorporating a raise. But um, those hands play pretty well on the river as well. The biggest problem I have with a hand like 5-deuce is just what do we do on the river? If it, if it comes like a filler card like a Jack or 9 and he bets, we're going to have to fold even if we're getting bluffed. If it comes a diamond, we're going to have to fold. Even if it comes a blank, like, I mean, obviously, if we hit two pair or trips, sure. But even if it becomes a blank, like a seven, like, are we just going to check call? So I would want to have a plan here on the turn for what I'm going to do on the river in various situations. I think calling the turn just kind of hoping is a little bit ambitious. Not that San Martino is doing that. I think he definitely has a plan in mind. Very methodical player, very in-depth player, takes his time in these spots. And um, again, I could get behind the call. I could get behind a fold. It's a really, really tough spot. San Martino opts to call. We take a river, which comes a blank four of hearts. Pot of 56 million, San Martino, obvious check. Over to Ensan, who decides to bet big here, which I think makes sense. He goes for 35 million. This is a good bet size. I mean, he's not repping that many hands when he's betting here. When you bet three times on this board, you're basically repping maybe ace 10 for value, maybe for thin value, ace 10. King 10, maybe, probably not. Jacks, okay, a queen or something better. Or you have a bluff. And there are a lot of bluffs, like ace-king missed, ace-jack missed, all the hands we talked about on the turn, those all missed, all the flush draws missed. So if you're going to bet this river, it makes sense to go big. You don't want to bet small when a large part of your range is bluffing and then just make it easy for your opponent to call. So I think $35 million makes sense, maybe even $40 million, $45 million makes sense to me as well. I could get behind these big bet sizes in a situation where the hero's range is polar. Over to San Martino, who has a very tough spot. I actually kind of like calling here on the river more than I like the turn, just because now if your opponent was bluffing, all his bluffs missed, he's probably going to bluff again, and now your equity is either 100% or zero, right? You either have the best hand or you don't. So calling is a lot better here because if your opponent missed his draw, you win the hand, whereas on the turn, you know, if he has a draw, you still might lose. So I actually kind of like this river spot for San Martino more than I like the turn spot. I would probably, in San Martino's shoes here, click the call button. I mean, 
if I'm going to hang on on the turn and I get, you know, arguably the best river in the deck besides a five or a deuce, I think it's a good spot to hang on. All the draws did miss. I mean, ace king, ace jack, jack nine, king jack, jack eight, maybe a random bluff. Maybe he's bluffing with eight nine, diamonds, ace four, ace deuce, four six. Uh, like all those hands you beat. And so I think there's just so many bluffs here and there's not that many value that I think it's a spot where as much as I would hate it, I kind of played the hand this way. I did decide to play the five deuce preflop. I, I stuck around on the turn. Uh, on the river, I think we almost have an easier call and I, and I, I wouldn't love it, uh, especially against a player like Ensan who really exploitatively hasn't pulled the trigger three times much in this match. That would be the one reason why I'd want to fold. But I still think... Uh, I'd him and haul here, and I would end up calling. San Martino does call as well and gets shown the bad news. Brutal spot. I'd love to hear your thoughts in a comment below. For more access to awesome content, be sure to check out the membership at Conscious Poker. There's a free trial for two weeks at the link below. If you don't absolutely love it and it doesn't bring you double the value that it's worth, go ahead and cancel. No, no harm done. I hope you enjoyed this. Be sure to subscribe uh, and turn on notifications. More awesome content's coming your way here from Epic Hands in the main event. I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.